Hey everyone, it's Mike here, Global Voodoo, and this is episode number two of my Q&A. Now, before we get into the questions that you guys have left for me, you know, I just want to bring this to your attention. You know, there's there's a lot of ways to make money online in, in this e-commerce world, right? From eBay to Amazon to Etsy to Craigslist to local Facebook groups. And what it comes down to really is it comes down to, you know, your passion, okay? You've got to like make things happen. You've got to list these things, you know. Selling, you know, listing two things a day is not going to cut it. You're not going to be able to quit your full-time job doing this. But, you know, you've got to, you really just got to go out there and motivate yourself somehow. And, you know, if you motivate yourself and if you do the simple things by listing every day, sending stuff out and keep, you know, moving forward, you're going to crush it, guys. I mean, it's that simple, you know. And it's this old, <laughs> it's this old saying. It's called, uh, it's an abbreviation. It's called KISS, K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> right? I know. That's what it is. It's so simple. Reselling is so simple. The basics are there. You just need to how to know, you need to how to know how, you need to go out there and implement them. That's the biggest thing. You got to go out there and freaking strike it, right? You got to be up there like you're playing baseball with a bat and you're you're thinking, "Hey, I need to bring these these two guys home that are on second and third. Get up there and hit the home run, guys." I mean, anybody could do this, right? This is the whole point of why I put these videos out there. If I could do this and I could turn around and, and buy stuff at thrift stores and turn two dollars into forty dollars and so 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 much, you can too, right? It's not that difficult. You just have to go out there and really just give it your all. Don't ever compare yourself to others. Just do what makes you money and what you do to provide for your family. So, uh, all right, guys, let's get into this video right now. All right. So our first question of today's show is from Adroit Sound Entertainment. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Do you know where do place sold as set? Will you even answer thanks in advance if you do? All right, so I'm assuming you're referring to sold as a set or do not separate stickers for Amazon FBA. And, um, yeah, these are very important. So if you're, you're doing a bundle or a multi-pack, let's take, for example, shampoo, okay? You could take, the, you know, let's say a three-pack of shampoo, all right? Um, you just can't throw three separate bottles of shampoo in your box and, you know, especially if you're on a listing where it's a three-pack. Amazon's not going to know that. So you have to combine them, right? You have to combine them either with plastic shrink film or in a box and then typically where you'd put that sold as a set or do not separate sticker is on the outside of that box or package. Hopefully that makes sense to you, but it's, it's pretty simple when it comes down to it. It's, uh, you know, you just don't want to, if you're selling 12, uh, you know, piece of candy and it's being sold under one listing for 12, you just can't throw the 12 pieces of candy separate in the box. Amazon's not going to know what to do with that. They're going to, it's going to cause a problem. There's going to be a delay in checking your shipment. So... When you're doing these multi-packs or you're doing a bundle, you have to package it that way. You have to package it all either in you know, shrink film or in a box. Preferably a box is what I would prefer because the shrink film stuff is going to get tossed around and you know, at least the box is going to protect your, your products that you're selling. So uh, hopefully that answers your question, uh, Android. I appreciate you commenting for sure. All right, let's get on to the next question here. This is from um, Anissa Raza. What's the most popular products to sell on Amazon? Well, that's definitely the, 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 you know, the, the, the answer, the question I get a lot is, what, what is the most popular products? And I don't think you need to break it down and say, what is the product? It's what, what is the category, all right? What, is the, what are some of the specifics? And what I'm going to do here for you guys is tell you my top five, okay? And this is in no particular order, but definitely books, all right? Uh, video games, all right? You also have clothing. You also have toys, and groceries, those are my top five. That's where I dominate Amazon with, with those five niches, okay? So, you know, I think we need to look at first is the all the opportunities, all right? You know, obviously you wanna find products that sell religiously for you, so, you know, you're making money, you know, week in, month out, year after year, but I think you need to really break it down on, on a category basis, right? Especially with clothing right now on Amazon FBA, it's, it's wide open, it's the Wild West, I've been talking about this for a while, you can make a lot of money selling clothing on Amazon. You know, when you start getting into the retail arbitrage stuff with toys, you know, sure, brand new toys right now that you find over the place, some can be profitable, some are going to be raised to the bottom. You know, obviously, then there's Q4 aspects of it where you could buy $10 toys and some for 30, 40 in minutes. So I think what you got to do is, you know, spend some time and, and find the profitable items. And don't just say to yourself, if you're, especially if you're new, going, well, what do I sell? You know, um, obviously, take my advice and listen to the five categories I'm selling in and, and start from there. Um, you know, you can sell DVDs. You can sell anything, really, on Amazon. I mean, health and beauty, you know, go down the line. But, uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question there. Anissa, thanks for commenting for sure. Go on to the next one here. This looks like it's from Dave uh, Concepcion. Wait, how long does your item get to stay in storage? What if it doesn't sell? How long does it have to sell? Um, 
All right, so you know, here's what it is. is there's, there's storage fees involved definitely with Amazon FBA when you're sending product in. You've got your standard storage fees and then you have your um, your, your long-term storage fees, okay? And I'm gonna put the links down below in this video so you can go and see the differences between them. But let's just put it this way, all right? For, in order for me to store this product in, let's say, my garage or my warehouse, you know, it's, it's taking up space, okay? And for the stuff that I'm sending in, it's, it's nothing. It's pennies. And um, it's not even at the end of the, you know, the year or when the long-term storage kicks in. It's really irrelevant to what I'm doing with my business with Amazon. It's, it's so minimal. And you got to remember, the, one of the major reasons why you want to sell on Amazon FBA is, is, one, the convenience, right? You don't have to do the shipping. You ship it all in a box, ship it to Amazon. They get it. They give it to their customers. Life's good, and you get a check, right? So if you're, you know, if you're doing, let's say, oversized items, let's say you're selling furniture, Okay, you have to understand the, the fees involved for the storage with that because it's all about like cubic meter, cubic foot. Um, again, the details will be down below, but you, you got to understand this. Like books, it, what is it going to cost you? A penny a year? To have maybe five cents a year to, to have one book at Amazon? So obviously if you have smaller items, the fees are less. And uh, if you have bigger items, the fees are going to be greater. So, um, But I think overall, if you're taking this seriously and you're going to commit and you're going to say, yes, I'm going to do Amazon FBA, and I think you'll agree with me over time that the storage fees are very minimum. And I, I do see them going up um, you know, over the years, of course. They've been going up you know, gradually. But it's, it's really irrelevant. It's, it's part of doing business. And I would recommend Amazon FBA to anybody that's out there right now that is selling product, let's say, on another market like eBay, where that same product's being sold on Amazon at a higher price and at a faster rate. So uh, hopefully that answers your question there. Dave, thanks for commenting. Really appreciate it. We're going to go move on to the next one here. It's from Gwen Dolly Poitier. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, guys. I'm not butchering your names. But uh, where are you getting the barcode? All right, I'm assuming that this came from one of my Amazon FBA videos. Um, you know, the barcode, okay. So here, let's break it down like this. All right, so you have a product that has a physical barcode on it. And if you scan that into Amazon or you manually type it in and the product shows up there, okay, that's the barcode you're using, okay. That's your barcode. That's how you're getting that in there. What you're going to need then is you're going to need, need to print out Amazon's bar, barcode to cover that existing barcode, okay? So, and you can go that and do, the, do that through Amazon system itself, you know, and you can use 8160 labels from Avery to print out on your printer. You can use a thermal printer to a label printer to, to get those print out yourself. Now, if you're talking about where do I get a barcode for a product that is not on Amazon, let's take, let's take for example, if you find a product or you're doing a, especially a bundle or a multi-pack, you're going to need to create your own barcode. And there's websites and you can go on eBay and, you know, you can Google it, buy barcodes and they're relatively cheap. It's not much. Um, you can go and buy these barcodes and then basically when you create your new listing, your new multi-pack, your new bundle, or maybe it's uh, your own private label product, that's where you go to get that barcode. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Because there's there's you know different systems and then, you know your comment there is kind of generalized so uh, I, hopefully that answers your question broken down three different ways so <laughs> all right uh, next one here we're gonna move on is from Harley Max 01 hi great video don't you get worried about the content of the box shown in this video uh, it gets damaged it looks like there is no protective package or packing material on the items just wondering because I want to make the step to sell on Amazon thanks for your time. Yeah, Harley, thanks for leaving this uh, comment here. You know, definitely take that step into Amazon. Um, I believe you're talking about a video I showed, um, my complete step-by-step -step process of how to list on Amazon uh, on my channel here. And uh, yeah, I did, you know, you can see in that box, I've just thrown stuff in there. And that's what I typically do. Now, you know, it's, I've sent in thousands of pieces of boxes and, and products to Amazon over the years. And honestly, you know, people have different approaches with that. Um, there's times now I do use void fill. You know, and I'll have links down below where you can get that stuff. Uh, you know, craft paper you can you can push together. You know, um, you want to protect your items for sure. But if you looked at the video that I have, when I'm sending in books, all right, um, or small media, it's well packaged in there, and it's not going to really go anywhere. And if it gets damaged, it gets damaged. I can tell you, like I said, of all the products I've sent there, all the all the shipments, um, I haven't had any of them get damaged. And if and if they do get damaged, you know, there's some repercussion there. You know. Um, was it damaged for the carrier where I can file a claim through the carrier? Was it damaged at the Amazon warehouse? You know, if it's damaged at the Amazon warehouse, you know, I'm going to get reimbursed for that. So, you know, I, yeah, definitely if you're sending in glass, you're sending in fragile items, you need to, yeah, you need to package it in there pretty nicely. But 
I believe you're talking about the the books and some of the CDs I was sending in through uh, <coughs> through Amazon that way. And uh, you know, as you can see, I, I don't I didn't really I just put it all in there. I didn't have any void fill or anything of that nature. You know, I also use a a box cutter to break down my boxes so they fit. So if I've got a uh, 16 by 12 by 12 box and I only have half the stuff going in there and the other half is really empty, void fill, it's empty space. You know, I use that box cutter to break down that box. So it's a nice tight box. It's got, you know, there's a couple inches worth of room in it. So if somebody does flip these boxes around, you know, it's got a little giveaway. But uh, yeah, typically, you know, you want to do some void fill in there. Um, I see people, I've seen some crazy videos out there where people are throwing in Walmart bags and I don't know, it just it looks like a mess to me. But, uh, you know, yeah, of course you want to protect your investment. You want to protect your product. So I'd recommend definitely some void fill for sure or package these boxes Especially for doing books, you, there's ways to, you know, um, package your box where you have books surrounding all of your, you know, your fragile items or maybe your glassware in there. And uh, but overall, you know, don't get, don't let that hang up on you. Don't let that make the decision like, well, I don't know where to go now because I'm packaging this box and I don't want to get destroyed. You know, you just got to get that box, first box out there, get it packaged, throw the stuff in there, make sure you know, shake it around. If you hear things tumbling around in there and it, it, there's a possibility of it getting broken, yeah, then, you know, spend some time and put some void fill in there because these boxes will be thrown around. If you've ever seen UPS or FedEx, I mean, these guys throw this stuff around. So uh, <laughs> hopefully that answers your question, Harley Max 01 Thanks for commenting for sure. So, yeah, this this concludes episode number two of uh, my Q&A with you guys here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the, 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 the you know, the questions and the comments and the, my answers and stuff like that. Um, before I leave here, though, you know, definitely you can leave a comment down below here on uh, YouTube, and I will make sure that I answer that on a future upcoming show. Uh, as long with that, you can go and follow me on Twitter. You can hashtag Pick for Profit. You can go on my Morning Cup with Joe Facebook and ask me questions anywhere um, on all these platforms I'm at. Um, just a quick reminder, you know, um, every Tuesday I, we are on a, a live show on Picking Profits channel with me and Craigslist Hunter, our Resellers Roundtable weekly show, which is also a part of the Resellers Roundtable free Facebook group. It's uh, a lot of people in there. It's growing every day. A lot of great individuals in there posting, sharing, and helping for sure. Um, so whether you are a brand new seller or a you know complete expert, I think you'll find the information there to be very very valuable. Um, not only with that, there's a lot of information going on, a lot of private hangouts, a lot of webinars, stuff like that really going on. A really cool scene, and uh, again, it's free. Uh, also, uh, before I check out here, guys, you can visit my website, pickforprofit.com. Um, you know, it, it is a paid subscription-based website. It's got a lot of training programs in there, a lot of videos and stuff like that, and it's a whole other community besides Resellers Roundtable. Also on that website, pickforprofit.com forward slash tools, you'll be able to see some of the tools that I use, for example, like that box cutter and stuff like that of what I use for my, my reselling business. So hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video here today. And, um, you know, again, you know, if you have a question, whether you might think it's stupid or silly, hey, drop it down there. I'm more than happy to answer it on a future episode for sure. Thanks, guys, for spending some time with me. If you did enjoy the video, hit like, share it to your friends, post it on Facebook. Again, thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your day to, to leave me these comments. I really appreciate it. This is my way of giving back. You guys have a great one. Till next time, I'm out of here. Peace.